That's it, man. Game over, man. It's game over. Oh, no tears, please. It's a waste of good suffering. Fairly alarmed here. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to MOT and Reviews, that is Masters of the Nerdiverse Reviews, where we take a look at some of cinema's cinematic supernovas, some of the best films the Nerdiverse has to offer, and some that are not so brightly lit. You can always find this comic relief of a podcast on iTunes. Stitcher, Spreaker, SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, and Google Play. And if you're listening to us from the future, hopefully you're listening through Spotify as well, if the Elder Gods deem it worthy. I'm, of course, your host, Mike G, and I am beyond ecstatic to welcome back Beer Business Bureau's own Darren. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up, guys? He has returned. Yeah, I've, I've been a little mysterious lately that's okay man you're off having your own side ga- uh, guiding you know what i mean <laughs> you know well gu- guiding means side story that's what i'm saying right <laughs> <laughs> i know i know what i say because i say it oh jeez, I, I speak for a living ladies and gentlemen <laughs> katana means japanese sword which <laughs> kind of works but works well with what we're talking about today huh it's a nice little segue and not the bike. Uh, so <laughs> It's not a bike either. It's not a bike either. <laughs> I'm still wrong tonight. You're going to have to be the anchor, dude. <laughs> no. I'm losing it. So I'm um, just to help. Nah, man. You're the, you're the cornerstone. You're the end pieces of the bread. Keep it all together. <laughs> that's the worst part. No, nah, man. Those, that's the part parts you, are horrible. That's the part you like, cho- you, you like toast and put in like... And, and putting meatloafs and shit. <laughs> you keep the meatloaf loafy, though. <laughs> <You know? laughs> oh, man, this is going to be a good show. Uh, let's get to what we're talking about. Uh, this is a film that came out this year to much fanfare. It was, I think it was received pretty well. Mm-hmm. Um, from what I've heard, I haven't heard one person not like this movie. And it's going to be kind of, a, I'm going to have a blast talking about it because there's some stuff to talk about in this one. Uh, this is 2018's, directed by David Leach, and this is... Deadpool 2. Deadpool. Chimichangas, all that crazy stuff. So, usually I like opening these with just a very basic question. What's your history with this movie, with this character? Okay, Cable. Say? Cable. Mm-hmm. Now. Let's talk about Cable now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's go. You want to do it? You yep. want to do it? Yep. How did you like Cable. I think Cable was represented very well by Josh Brolin. Yes, I absolutely agree. I think agree. he's perfect as as Cable. But one of the things that I'm not too fond of, which I guess because, you know, writing, whatever. But right. if you were to look at Cable in this movie, since he's never made an appearance in a movie. Like, ever. Ever. This, ever. Is his, this is his debut, really. This is his debut because he never was any kind of weird side character in any of the uh, – Ratner right. or Singer films, right? Which is weird. Which is super weird. But um, I mean, I mean, you got Bishop, but you don't Bishop. get, but you don't get Cable. I wonder what the deal was with that. Because why wouldn't they just have in Days of Future's Past? Why yeah. not have a Cable? That that's that was my main. That issue doesn't make with sense it. to me. It was like, the the weirdest thing ever. But anyway, aside from that, which was the Days of Future Past was an amazing movie. Yeah, um, mind you, it, it, I mean, it stands it, up with X two. Yeah, I mean, it, it, in my opinion, maybe I mean, even better. Yeah, just a little, a little bit better. Just a little bit better. Uh, but that being said, like when it first came out, Rotten Tomatoes gave it like I think a ninety six or ninety seven percent, super right hot out the gates. Right. But we're not talking about that movie right now. We're talking about Deadpool. Well, actually, specifically Cable. Cable. So I like Josh Brolin's portrayal. Mm-hmm. I think so. For people who don't know who Cable is, he's <laughs> actually his name <laughs> is his name is I think his name is Nathan Summers. Nathan Summers, man. which. As you probably have guessed it already, he's actually Cyclops' son yes. from the future, and that's the main point. He comes from the future. Mm-hmm. But even if you didn't know that, you would never have known that he was an actual mutant in this movie. Right. Because but actually, if, believe it or not, he does have telekinetic and telepathic uh, powers. Yeah. And 
they don't really show that. They, they just don't show touch it at all. Not, not, I mean, you sort of see it a little bit like, when he when he's when he's retrieving his weapon. I thought that but was like that, mm, it's, it's, you know what? Yeah. That is very clever. You said that because yeah. I just assumed it was some kind of new like magnet. future magnet right. that yeah. just went towards his back. But it could have been him using his telekinesis. That's the first thing I well that I would think that because I know about cable. I mean, yeah. I know about cable more than some people do. Yeah. So you know. And so I mean, and if you're if you're also tuning in, you don't know anything about Cable. Cable was actually he became an X Man, mm-hmm. um, in X Force. Yeah, and yeah. and he started X Force, and that's another thing. And I'm glad that it happened this way because it'd be kind of weird. But I'm yeah. kind of glad that Deadpool is the one who founded X Force, and not Cable, because it would be a whole different story altogether. It would be kind of awkward. Yeah, right. It would like, be super awkward. You know, if Cable went growing up, Cable. Was the coolest. Cable yeah. was kind of the coolest X Men character yeah. outside of Wolverine, right? Because he was just so badass, yeah. and he was had a thousand pouches. <laughs> he had all the guns. Yeah. And his eyes glowed. He was this badass old grizzled war veteran from the future. Yeah. But also, like Darren was mentioning, has a power set that is re- actually ridiculous. Mm-hmm. If you really do dollars to cents and go through his wiki. And he does so much stuff. He has telekinesis. He has telepathy. Mm-hmm. He has like I think he has energy projection on some yeah. levels. Yeah, he can manipulate energy if I remember correctly. As right, well. right. He's like yeah. he's pretty much an omega level mutant. The only problem is, and what they kind of touched on in the film is that he has a techno organic virus, right, which exactly. causes his arm yeah. to be all metally. Mm-hmm. And at first I thought maybe it's like a cybernetic implant. Maybe they're doing that, but no. Yeah. In the movie, they show the creep. Yeah. Of the techno organic virus, and they don't even explain it. They're right. Like, and usually the flicker in his eyes from his natural power. Mm-hmm. And his powers are all being used at the same time to keep the organic, the, the techno organic right. virus at bay at all times. Right. Otherwise, it'll just start, it'll just take him over immediately. Exactly. So he's, so in a way, he, that he's, his powers are limited because of that. He's handicapped. It's kind of like Wolverine is handicapped from the adamantium on his bones. Right. You know, so. you know and it slows him down. And right. It, it doesn't allow his healing factor to be as effective as a dead boy. Right. So I liked uh, I liked Josh Brolin. I liked Thanos as as uh, Cable as they made the joke in the film. Yeah. Like you said, I just think Cable needs more time mm-hmm. and he needs more explanation rather than, oh, I'm a dude from the future. Right. Uh and it would have been far more interesting, and I don't want to go too deep into spoilers just yet because I just want to kind of give first impressions. I just think that the 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 MacGuffin of the film mm-hmm. was was ill placed based on what probably they had access to. I I yeah I can see you, that you know what I'm saying. I, I I, I'm dancing that, yeah. around it, but I, I, right. I think you're picking up what I'm laying down. Yeah, I, I understand. You know <laughs> what I mean. The MacGuffin is just. That was the weakest part of the movie for me mm-hmm. outside of the comedy. And I was listening to another review and a guy said, hey, how, was Deadpool to a good movie? He's like, it was okay, but it was funny as hell. And that makes it good. And I think that's one of its saving graces is that, you know, uh, Ryan Reynolds still kind of holds the reins. Well, that's that's thing. the thing about that's the thing about this. So, like, honestly, you don't even really even have to see Deadpool 1. No, you don't. You don't. You and really it, don't. It, it, stand, it stands on its own. Yeah, and really the comedy is it's a it's, it's very inappropriate, but it's appropriate at the same time, and it's very modern, and it's very very relatable. Yeah, in in many ways, uh, more than one. But that being said, it, it's it's a balancing act. It is a balancing act because like the 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 comedy is what saves it. It's also what drives it. Yeah, the actual storyline, not so much. <laughs> More so in the first one, yeah, because the motivations of in course. the first one were stronger, right, than they are in this one, mm-hmm. because this one's more fueled by the comedy, right. And I think the sec, the first one, did I say the first one? The second one's more fueled by the comedy, mm-hmm. and the first one is more fueled by the balance, right. Where uh, it's really a pure, it's almost one of the most pure origin stories in comic book film history, because yeah. it really boils down what his motivations are, and it humanizes the character more yeah. so in. In the first one, than this one. Yeah. That being said, this one's almost better in every other single yeah. category. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. You know what I mean? Because it's they're both morality tales mm-hmm. buried under like raunchy kind of comedy. And honestly, the second one's more toned down. 
than the first one. You mean in terms of morality or in, in terms, terms of, of um, raunchiness? Oh, in raunchiness. Terms of, uh, yeah. You know um, what I mean? Well, I think all, that's also because you have a lot more going on. Yeah. You have a lot of shit going on. Because, I, mean, I mean, there was nudity in the first yeah, one. Yeah. There was way more, like, like body gags and right. like that. But this one, there's a classic body gag we'll get to. <laughs> 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 Jesus. But uh, I just think this one was a bit safer yeah. in certain ways and a bit more boisterous mm-hmm. in others. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean, and, and of course, like... Again, you have a lot more characters in this one. Yeah, you know, it's so, way more of a balancing act. I mean, in that respect, and in some ways, if they were to add that the other ra- the raunchiness, then it would be kind of like random almost. Yeah, because like it's like okay, well, we're focusing on this, but then all of a sudden, I see a penis or some shit, right, or just. You know, somebody flashes you going. Right. Out. It's like it's like it's almost like the nudity in Logan. Yeah, it <laughs> felt so forced and stupid. It's like oh boobs, and it's like the most most. Requiem for a Dream, bur- you know, like, yeah. bum-out movie of the century. It's like, it just felt forced. Right. And this one, it didn't feel forced at all. Like, yeah. the scenes that were a bit more on the re- crazier side flowed naturally with the film. The film editing in this is actually very good in mm-hmm. how the film flows. I never felt bored. Mm-hmm. And I never felt like I was lost in what was going on, even with all the nonsense that they played within this movie. Um, since we're going into characters, we talked about Cable, how we feel about Cable. How do you feel about Ryan Reynolds' second run at Deadpool? I, I think he actually he killed it more than he did in the first round. Yeah, I this mean, is like, really his baby. Isn't yeah, it? It, it truly is. And you know, it's and I don't want to jump ahead, but he he does the meta of the movie is also really yes. I really love a lot, mm-hmm. and my mom loved it too. She yeah, did, and she and she, well, she, she's seen the other she's seen a few of the other X Men. My but, grandmother loved this. movie. Yeah. And I was like, Nana, this may not be the best movie for you. She's like, I saw the first one. I was like, what? <laughs> you, you're cool with that? She was like, yeah, I got through it. I was like, Nana, you don't see Deadpool too. <laughs> she super saw it and liked it. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, and in, in all ways, Ryan Reynolds is a goofball. Yeah. He, he can't he, He's it. always going to be a goofball. Yeah. And it, it just mean, fits him, dude. Yeah. Like, I can see him. Doing a ten year run on Deadpool like Logan, I mean like like Hugh Jackman did. If Disney lets him, I mean he's gonna do it as long as they let him. Y- y- right, you know, right. Because Deadpool, but uh, this was Fox, wasn't it? Yeah, but Fox is in kind of a little turmoil between right. Disney and Comcast, so it depends on how that shoe falls. Right, Disney may because Disney's like putting. The kibosh on all X Men stuff for right now, right? What, right? Which is well, Fox is because they yeah. want to stay in good terms with Disney, so which explains the whole X Mansion thing, mm-hmm. where I, they they were Fox was kind of pushing it mm-hmm. with with the I don't know if so. If, okay, there's a scene where Colossus brings Deadpool uh, to the X Mansion. Yes, after he blows him, his, okay. he blows him. Actually, uh-huh. let's go into the let's go into the plot now. Let's yeah. go into spoilers. Yeah. So I think we've gotten really our good ideas, and the other characters, our feelings for them will come out once mm-hmm. they're kind of like uh, brought to the table. Right. So let's go to the beginning of this movie, and I don't remember it. It has a it has a soft opening, and then mm-hmm. it has the the actual title card hard cut. Mm-hmm. So the soft opening for this is. We find out Deadpool's been doing his Merc, Merc with a mouth thing mm-hmm. for about two years now. So he's well comfortable in this role. And it's this montage of him just wreaking havoc yeah. th- across yeah. the world. Yeah. Right? And he's uh, taking out Yakuza bosses. Right. He's he's at like honky talk bars wearing, <laughs> wearing, <laughs> wearing pumps. <dude. laughs> it's just a really wacky season. He's, he's chasing this mob boss and this kind of goes into the kind of the crux of the film. Mm-hmm. And this takes, and this is a, uh, what is it called? Um, where it, where a film starts in the middle. It's a French term. I can't remember. Um, shit. It's not Jamais Vu. No. Um, oh my gosh. I actually, media rest. At, yes. It's, it's a at, media rest. Yeah. yeah. Where it's like this takes place 20, 90 days or yeah. or what is it two days from now or right. something like that, and he chases a he's hunting a mob boss in like this he has a panic room mm-hmm. and Deadpool is just ripping through his seventy guys in this with chainsaws and it's just very cartoonish it's yeah. very red and stimpy yeah you know what I mean and uh, he lets he accidentally lets the guy go mm-hmm. he get, and that's the whole um, Mohinder thing or his name is it Mohinder or is it 
his buddy, his little his taxi driver. Yeah, buddy I think I think uh, Mahinder. I think that's what his name is. Yeah, yeah, man. So um, we get to that point where the guy escapes and somehow follows Deadpool home. And that's one of my biggest pet peeves about this movie. It's like, why doesn't anybody follow the heroes home? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it must be really hard to escape as Batman with, with cameras and shit. Right. Like, like super. Everyone should know where Superman lives. Yeah, I, just follow the cape. You know, right, like exactly. Spider Man. Yeah, I was just going to say you, that. How do you disappear? Right. <laughs> everyone should know where everybody lives. But a that's cloaking little, device. It's it's a very a cloaking. I like the idea that Superman just goes at hyper speed up <laughs> in a split second and goes like supersonic. And then just stops somewhere and just drops. I mean, for well, I was going to say for Superman, he doesn't. Why would he give a shit? I mean, like if you want to, you can kill everybody and anyone at any given time. But then he has people he protects, like Lois Lane yeah. and Jimmy Olsen, and people come to the Daily Planet, start in trouble. You know, he has his like Superman himself would be fine unless right. you're like Doomsday or something. But I digress. <laughs> so the guy follows Deadpool home, and uh, Wade is having a conversation with his girlfriend about having kids. And I would think that maybe he probably couldn't. You would think, right? Well, I don't know. I mean, what kind of what kind of sperm with that? I mean, technically, well, can- cancerous sperm. Yeah, like. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, hyper, I mean, I mean, not mutants, not really, because I mean, like his healing factor would what? Well, it doesn't really correct; it just stops. Yeah, stops it's keeping it at bay, and that's yeah. actually a part of this movie too. Yeah. So, long story short, <laughs> you know, um, they like, follow him home. Yeah. And they're trying to take him out, and a stray bullet kills Vanessa. Mm-hmm. And that's a big spoiler. So we're in spoiler, so big spoiler. Mm-hmm. And Deadpool catches the guy, and he has this weird scene where he gives him a big hug. And I'm like, okay. And then the guy just gets smacked with a giant, like, blue bus. I, I You know, funny enough, Very I, weird I, I, I knew – actually, I knew exactly what was going to happen. You because saw it coming a mile I, away. I, I, I saw it because, like uh, – Unless he was going to like jump off of a cliff or something like that, I knew that he's in the middle of the street. Like, what yeah. else would he be doing? What are they doing it's yeah. in the rain? Yeah. Right. <laughs> and Deadpool's like, "Yeah, I'm kind of done. I'm gonna. I want. I wonder if I'm immortal. Right. This is his true test. And actually, very comic accurate that he just can't die. Yeah. Outside of like to- like deatomization, and even then, I have wonder. I have worries and wonders. <laughs> He'll just like. The, the dust will come together like Majin Buu. You know, just <laughs> read back up here. <laughs> right. But Deadpool kills himself pretty much and explodes his house. And we go into this weird Celine Dion, like, yeah. like, like Goldfinger montage. Yeah. The, the song is actually for, very for well the, written. For the, heart, for the heart opening, yeah. Yeah, for the heart opening. And uh, we kind of... And from there, does is that pick up where we were just about to talk about where yeah. Colossus kind of collects him? Yeah, he collects his body parts. He says he's been asleep for a few days and he's saying and he tries to he basically he's re, he's trying to recruit Deadpool to become yeah, an X Men. He's X-Men. giving him the soft sell yeah, yeah. to become an X Men. Right. And Deadpool since the first one is like, nah, I'm not a team player. Right. You guys are a bunch of Boy Scouts weirdos. Yeah. I don't want to be in your weird coat, your beauty coat. <laughs> and he, he's yucking it up, and he's, like, breaking Cerebro. And yeah. He's, he's dipping around in Xavier's mansion. Did you, I'll let you do it because you, you wanted to talk about oh, it. Oh, yeah. And so, like, you know, Deadpool is just, like, Colossus is really trying with him. He's trying to, to sell him on the idea of becoming part of this this happy-go-lucky brotherhood known as the X-Men. Right. Which is, of course, he Deadpool knows is it's weird it, it's yeah it, i have my own weird thoughts about the x-men in general but yeah <laughs> but deadpool's like look man no fuck, no fuck this fuck you, you <laughs> why didn't you let me just be dead right it's like i i wanted to see what the hell was gonna happen yeah and you just fucked it all up basically Thank but, you. Any, but but um there's one particular scene where <laughs> it is also kind of an easter egg it's a big where, easter egg where um deadpool's roaming around in a in a fucking like a uh, a uh, a scooter. He's re- yeah. He has like a, he has a some, rascal. Some weird reason, but anyway, um, he's roaming around and he's like, he says, "Hey, so where's where's Professor X? Is it the is it the James McAvoy one or is it the uh, is it Stewart and McAvoy? Stuart, right? Stuart, yeah. Why is there never anyone in this big ass house <laughs> but you, me, and and nigga signed a teenage weirdo? Yeah. I, I I think I know we got more money for yeah. this movie. He says it out loud. I know we right. got more money for this movie. Yeah. And then the scene happens yeah um and you see beast you see quicksilver <laughs> you see uh I, I, actually i don't remember I, I think it's all of the it was such a quick shot fa- yeah it was a quick it shot it was all the 
um, X Men Apocalypse yeah, kids, right? And you see Beast slowly closing the door like, before mm-hmm. before um, Deadpool sees them. Yes, and I took that as you know Fox, you know, acknowledging that they have you know. Uh, not an embargo, but an, you know, an inhibition. Yes. But they're still going to push it anyway, just a little I tiny bit. I love it. I love yeah. that about this series. Yeah, is that they thumb their nose at their own company, right? <laughs> Nevertheless, DC or or Disney, they right. thumb their nose at everyone in this right. film. And you know how that was done, right? It was actually filmed off set at the Dark Phoenix um, filming because they were filming kind of at the same time. Oh no way! Yeah, so they filmed that scene on the Dark Phoenix set. And they were just like, yeah, just take this footage and spice it into your movie. Oh, shit. That's hilarious. It's crazy. That's, e- that's even funnier yeah. than I initially yeah, thought. Yeah, Ryan called somebody was like, yo, yo, James, man, can you get there? Just do a quick scene. <laughs> I know you guys are already in costume. Just, just, just shoot it. Just shoot it. We'll figure it out. We'll Dude, figure it that, out. That's, 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 that elevates this movie even higher right. than, <laughs> than I initially graded it. It's that's such, awesome. It's, yeah, I, I read that the other day. I was like, what? That's brilliant, dude. I love it. And it was such it, – and without it, the movie's not as good. Even yeah. for that split second moment, right? It's not as good, right? Right. So, um, like you said, he was recovering at the X Mansion. Uh, he's kind of dipping around, mm-hmm. just breaking stuff, being annoying, just, just being an ass. Just, and Colossus yeah. is so patient <laughs> with him. Speaking of which, I love what they're doing with Colossus. Yeah, I hope they never show him in human form. Keep him yeah. big, yeah, me- metal ultra. Sick, like mm-hmm. comic accurate Colossus, yeah. and don't break the illusion that there's a dude under there, right? You know what I mean? So, um, he's like, Okay, you're gonna be an X Men now, so you're just an X Men. <laughs> Here's our first mission we're gonna go to this weird, um, only God forgives, um, mm-hmm. mutant church. And something was very weird about that, and I thought was interesting was they get they take the Blackbird to the church and make this mm-hmm. giant uh appearance. And the news calls them the X Men, mm-hmm. which is something that is the I think a first for the X series is the, for them to be known and kind of beloved in a weird way. Yeah, because they did with admiration. It wasn't some that menace Spider Man kind right. of feel. It was like right. the X Men are here. It's going to be all right. Yeah, because in the history of X Men, they've never been revered. They've always they, that's and that's always part of the the struggle with yes. being an X Men. You know, you always you, you had to fight your own kind. And protect people who also hate you too. Yeah, the X Men were never loved. Yeah, like even like even other hero companies didn't really. That's why the Avengers are always going at it with them because right. they're just the most misunderstood, mm-hmm. kind of like punkish, like don't you know the reason the X Men exists was because it was an allegory for the civil rights. Exactly, movement. exactly. You know what I mean? So it's like these are people who are never going to be fully accepted into society because they're different. Right. And of course, this different is te- telepathy and eyes. You know, eye yeah. shooting out of your brain. <laughs> So they get to the school, and we meet little child MacGuffin, mm-hmm. uh, Fire Fists. Yeah, is the kid, and uh, Deadpool is, has his his X Men trainee coat on, and everybody lets him know that he's indeed a trainee, yeah. and I love it. Uh, and Negasonic Teenage Warhead mm-hmm. is there mm-hmm. with her girl with her girlfriend. All right. What was uh, it? A, Yukio. Yukio. Hi, Yukio. <laughs> uh, Bye, Wade. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I love Yukio, dude. I don't even know. I think she's based off a real character. But wouldn't it just been better just to let it be hope? I mean, I'm, I'm sorry. I, 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 no, no, no. I, I agree. I, I agree with that. No, with I, it, it, it should have. It should. It should have been. But you know what? Honestly, just, like. It would have been a stronger tie to cable. It, it yes, but at the same time, you know, Fox has its limits. I'm sure, and that's what I mean. Like, yeah, the the MacGuffin of the film mm-hmm. is handicapped by what because they've always kept Deadpool on a very short leash mm-hmm. in regards to what he has access to, which is why you have a Negasonic teenage mm-hmm. warhead. And I'm surprised they let him get Colossus. Yeah, right. And uh, Ajax, mm-hmm. and they've always had these. Z list heroes and villains, and mm-hmm. we'll go into even more of that when it comes to the X Force. X Force, yeah. And this kid, man, I tried my hardest to vibe with them. <laughs> I'm not a fan. <laughs> the kid who plays uh, Fire Fist, yeah, he's just kind of he's kind of hamming it, but he's a kid actor. But it's, that's no excuse. 
I don't know. How do you feel about fire fists and his fire fists? <laughs> That's funny you said ham in it, but um... <laughs> oh, I'm not trying to go there. <laughs> I, I can't throw stones in that glass house. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, uh, it, it, you know, I kind of overlooked him. Honestly, even though he was, he was kind of the, 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 yeah, it is, but he's kind of, he's kind of the, the, the focus of, of the of whole the, film. But, and he, and he's the, he's the one who ties cable to the past. Yes. He's the one who ties, ties, cable even, to the even past. though it's not accurate. It's super not accurate. Yeah. Cause um, that's not how that goes down. Yeah. <laughs> if it does, if it goes down at all. Right. Cause, mm, cause hope is, mm, hope is not technically, comic wise, is not technically his birth daughter. Right. It's right. a whole convoluted X Men writing. Thing. Yeah. Um. We, and again, like it, I, I, I'm overlooking it. I'm overlooking all that, and also the fact that if you want to really get granular with it, the fact that he has a teddy bear instead of a baby doll. But you know, I, I get it. Yeah, it's fine. You don't want to have charred ba- baby doll face hanging off right. one of your heroes. Yeah, that could be a little too dark, especially for this. Even for a movie like this, <laughs> you know what I mean. Uh, it, anyway, there's so many missed opportunities. <laughs> yeah, in this movie, like following this scene, Deadpool kind of stops the kid from just charring the entire place. We get a a kind of uh, and this help me with my X Men lore, uh, like a Guyrich kind of character who's kind of you know like Henry Guyrich, who's the like the kind of mutant <clears throat> racist, like the the um, what was the name of that weird? human rights like church in x-men uh, history um, it was in a cartoon as well it was like human oh, hu- sh- like friends shit. like friends of humanity or something like that. um it's so blinking it. on me I, I, um i can't think can't right think now. But, but he's kind of like a guy like that where right it's like i love mutants but legit he super hates them so actually i have a question about that because I, I hadn't looked at the credits so sx as as no, Essex is the name of, of Nathaniel Essex, which, which is, is Doc, Mr. Sinister. Which is Mr. Sinister, which is a huge part of X-Men lore. Right. So, my question, and also there's another thing that, about that, because in Essex Corporation, they make they make an appearance in the very last credits X-Men movie. of X-Men of, of X Apocalypse. Yes. So, again, Fox is kind of pushing it. They're really, they're, put, they're, they're pushing something that's never going to be. Right. Because these movies are over. Right. Like, unless Marvel take, unless DC... Unless I'm sorry, um, Disney takes mm-hmm. it under the wing. But so, so I, I, from my understanding, that was a very gimped looking Mister Sinister, and that's what I, I was thinking at first. Was I wanted to say that, but but then I looked at it. I was like, you know, no, this dude's a bitch. This dude's a bitch, and <laughs> it's a. It would be a very hard sell i would have loved if the kid killed him yeah and he just morphed into mr sinister right like i said missed opportunities mm-hmm. like the build like you said the building's name is essex school of mm-hmm. misfit children or whatever the main guy looks like because one of mr sinister's powers among a billion of them is he mm-hmm. can shapeshift yep. pretty shape-shift, easy yeah. so he can just be anyone he mm-hmm. has which is puck. why i thought he, that's who it that was. was the end game that wouldn't that have been so cool that would have been amazing Even for a stinger yeah but We'll get into the stingers of this damn movie. <laughs> but missed opportunity. Mm-hmm. Like, they apprehend the kid, and I was like, ooh, they're going to take him to Genosha. Mm-hmm. We, we may see right. Genosha. Genosha. Don't yeah. take me there. Don't take me there. The kid's yeah. like, I'd rather, I'd rather die than go, go, go to the icebox. Go to the icebox. Yeah. And I'm like, what if this is Genosha? That would be super cool. And no. Yeah. It's like they take him to some no name. Like facility that probably has some X lore down the road somewhere. Yeah. But it's a missed opportunity. You know what I mean? And I it would have been kinda cool to get that nod. Just 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 a name, right? right? I don't even know if they're holding that for Dark Phoenix. I doubt it because I heard the script of that movie is atrocious. Oh but wow, okay. I'm hearing really salty things about it. But uh uh you know, we find at this point we cut to the actual introduction of Cable, mm-hmm. which is kind of weird. It was set up weird to me. Yeah. So Fire Fist is grown up in the future. The future he's is a, obvi- he's a grown man. Yeah. The future is obviously fucked. It's the uh, days of future past. It's days of future past uh, storyline. Kind of, because their apartment was still kind of nice. Well, I mean, well, in the Days of Future Past storyline, not everyone was enslaved. I mean, mo- most of the mutants were dead. 
True. With the exception of Cable, uh, Cable Professor X, Professor X, X uh, Wolverine, 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 Kitty Pryde. Yeah. yeah. But anyway, that, that's a whole story all in itself. But yeah, it shows. So Fire Fist is the one who kills Cable's family, quote family, unquote. Quote unquote. <laughs> family, family, family. Uh, and the reason why. The reason why he did it, it's still, it's kind of vague. It's, it's, it's I'm a bad guy. Yeah, like, and I found my villain. I right. found my hero. I thought that was a little. It weak. was never explained why Fire Fist has a vendetta, right, with Cable at all. Yeah, it, it's, outside of Cable being just some soldier. It's, re- he's it's not an it's really, it's really kind of a lame explanation they give. Mm-hmm. They, they said that he, he, Cable found when he was a little boy. It, you know, in this instance, when he's yeah. coming back in the future. Yeah. And he finds that Fire Fist kills the dude who's been torturing him for, for a long time from the S Corporation. He finds the, the the catalyst point, right? He finds he, the catalyst where he where he he kills the, the dude, yeah. and he has a taste for blood, quote unquote. So he becomes a villain. Yeah, it's a, it's the singularity of this kid's right. trek towards super villainy. Yeah, and he's like, if I kill this kid before that happens, mm-hmm. then there's a possibility. That it will save my family's life, right. and he hasn't really thought of any other option than that. <laughs> Not like catching the kid when he's younger, and maybe right. pulling him out of or- orphanages, or even going further back and right. maybe neutering his dad so he's not born in the first. Yeah, this is my problem with time travel. Anyway, yeah, it, yeah. It, time travel fucks. It, time travel messes up everything. everything. It, no one does it right except Primer. Which is why, which is yeah, which is why Ryan Rent of Deadpool says, "Hey, you know, why don't you just go back and kill Hitler then?" Exactly. Like, it's like, like, why don't you stop all this shit from happening? I, 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 it's, a, it's like a, this funny like nerd joke where it's like you never go back to kill Hitler because it makes everything infinitely yeah. worse. <laughs> and there's like this weird comic where there is a bunch of time cops who are just stationed around Hitler at yeah. all times because yeah. people keep trying to go back to kill him. And to, <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a secret service for Hitler that he doesn't even know is happening <laughs> of time cops because apparently if you kill Hitler back then, we're just overrun by space aliens where everybody becomes ant people. It just gets real bad real fast. So we get to the ice box, mm. right? And we have this weird kind of situation where they have anti mutant power necklaces, which right. is a canon thing. Yeah. Genosha has them. Yeah. Why did you just call it damn Genosha? And yeah, that, that's little, again, it's strange. It's strange. I, I know, it's, it's, it's like, like, the, it's like, like they're, they're, they're dancing it. around it. Right? It not, to let so you, not to let you know that they can't do it, but just to show you that they're trying to be a little different. They're trying to be different, but yeah. it's like. The name drops like this make nerds lose their mind. Yeah, they just it could still be an icebox to say we're on we're on we're in the country of Genosha. Yeah, I would have been totally fine with that. Yeah. Anywho, we're starting to um, Deadpool and Fire Fist. I haven't dedicated this kid's name to memory because I don't care. I just don't like his character anyway. <laughs> I don't it, I even remember his name, but okay. But yeah, it's something weird. Uh, they're going down Murderer's Row. You mm-hmm. know, when you first get to prison, mm-hmm. and Deadpool is starting to cough and get sick. Yeah. And he's like, what's wrong with you? He's like, well, my mutant power kind of keeps me from having super ultra ultra cancer. Yeah. So the moment my mutant power stops, I'm just back at it. Yeah. And that's like stage four infinite cancer, yeah. you know. <laughs> and it's like yeah. super nuts. It's like, damn, I, I didn't think about that. Right. Yeah. And then we have the weirdest cameo in X-Men history. So I'm thinking – Who's going to be the bad boy Yardy? Black Tom Cassidy. Black Tom Cassidy. So it's really random. And Black Tom has a crazy history with X-Men. He's yeah. the brother of Banshee. It's a yeah. ton of stuff with Black Tom. He, he has wood powers that they yeah. just don't show. Right. He, and because of the the nature of the, 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 the plot device, no one shows their powers. Right. Because there's a bunch of crazy weirdos in there. I'm, I'm, my eyes are just darting. Yeah. Right, who's that? You're right. Is that Blob? No. Yeah. Is that so and so? Is that blink? Is that and it's no one, right? Right. And that's that's another thing that bothers me. When you have a giant mutant puddle, right? You, you can just have Ricochet back there. Just have a gray dude <laughs> with a with the wave cap, right? You know, just I'm sorry. This is too many X Men to not have in there. So uh, the kids like, man, the first thing you do when you got you gotta go you get to the yard, is you got to shank the biggest <laughs> motherfucker you can see. <laughs> so the cool the kids like, yeah, yeah, man. He, he pulls out like a pin. Yeah, and that, and out of his prison wallet. Out of his prison wallet. He's like, he pulls it out of his ass, apparently. He tries to step to a Black Tom, and Black Tom just punches him dead in the nose. Kid violence, which is also right. not very, very rarely seen. Mm-hmm. Deadpool can't do anything because mm-hmm. he's super weak and just 
might as well just have a kryptonite necklace around him. Right. You know what I mean? So it's just very, uh, very weird scene. Like, very wasted. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of wasted potential. If I had to have any criticism of this movie, it's just, there's a lot of wasted potential. Yeah. And, and, you know, again, like, the fact that Black Tom Cassidy even made an appearance... It's kind of it's, 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 it's weird. It's weird. It's, it's kind awkward. Of awesome and awkward. Yeah. Right. <laughs> and it's like, and then you know he ends up dying. Yeah. In, 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 a, in a stupid way. In a, way in a stupid fucking way. The most senseless way possible. And then the weird cultural appropriation. Jokes. Yeah. I mean that. that <laughs> as, like, as 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 inappropriate as those were, they were still funny as they were shit. They're still funny. It, it made me feel bad laughing at him because it yeah. was done. It was done with such rev- reverence. <laughs> yeah. He's like, it's a shame that he feels like he needs to wear dreads to, to fit in. <laughs> you know, they even, you know, and that, and then it feeds into another joke, which will come later about Cable. It's yeah. a running joke. Yeah, that, about, he, that he's a big racist. Yeah, C- Cable's a super big racist. <laughs> Cable's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> he's like, you fucking retarded. He was like, like Cable, <laughs> Cable, I just want you to look at people not by the color of their skin, <laughs> but by the content of their character. Cable's like, I don't know where any of this is coming from. I'm not racist. By the way, if you don't know, Black Tom Cassidy is not black. He's super not black. <laughs> it's a, He's black Irish. Yeah. He's black Irish. Yeah. It's, Let's put that out there right now so people don't think, oh, shit. <laughs> people got super racist out of nowhere. Why you guys think it's funny? Let's just clear that up. Look, look up Black Tom on Wikipedia. You'll see what we're talking about. He has a yeah. weird little twindly mustache. But... Cable breaks in to to I just want to call it, I'm calling it Genosha. <laughs> <laughs> Cable breaks in into, into Genosha and is going after the kid, mm-hmm. mind you. Yeah, kind of a weird Terminator Two kind of vibe. Yeah, right? I, I got that for sure. And of course, this is the first time Cable's meeting Deadpool, and Deadpool's like, "Hey, he has a Winter Soldier arm." You yeah, know? He's, yeah. He's bucking it up. Yeah, and and Cable's just ripping through. The the uh, the guards the guards like they're yeah. nothing because yeah. of course because he's a super badass ultra you know future cop future soldier and he pretty much kills Wade right mm-hmm. well no Wade what happens is they they were tussling and yeah he, he they he Wade falls and he pretty much breaks his back. Like in a ninety in a, de- in a, very in a ninety degree angle, cartoon, yeah. very cartoonish, yeah. Bugs Bunny level. Yeah. Like his back, his legs. Are, it's almost like if the raid was made by like Tex Avery. Yeah, you know, like yeah. his, his back, his his lower torso and his legs are on the table, but his back <laughs> is flush against the floor. I'm like, what the hell kind of break is this? That's not even right. <laughs> and I let it go because I was hyped <laughs> about the moment. <laughs> And for some reason, <laughs> the, the little necklace MacGuffin, the little necklace th- uh, plot device comes off. Yeah. Or gets deactivated. Mm-hmm. And he's back to being old, badass, Deadpool, super strength, all that fun stuff. Yeah. And you have a pretty good fight. Yeah. You have a pretty good toe to toe, kind of evenly matched kind of fight. <laughs> and uh, it ends up with the kid somehow escaping mm-hmm. through his buddy that he made, found the quote unquote biggest guy in the yard. Right. And escapes off with him, right? Right. But Deadpool and Cable end up busting out, tumbling down this weird, uh, like it's a mountain slope. mountain side, yeah. like an icy snow snow slope. Yeah, and he falls into like a thing of ice, mm-hmm. which would pretty much in- incapacitate most fast healers. Right. Like Wolverine has a problem with water. Right. That's his biggest fear. It's like drowning. Yeah. But but Cable, I mean, but uh, Deadpool's kind of just he goes into this weird. Death state again. Right. It's very much used in the film. How did you feel about that death, that weird death state that he would enter in to see Vanessa and kind of get weird? It's weird, but I didn't think it was. It wasn't I, offensive. I, I, it, I, I, I thought it was. I thought it was interesting. Mm-hmm. That's what I thought. Because, I mean, like, honestly, like. I would have liked it more if it was just death. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, whatever. I mean, like you can't get too dark with this movie. You know what I mean? I mean, like, I mean, like death, as in he de- he has a crush on death. Right. Thanos can't have death because death. Wants right. Deadpool. That would have been a kind yeah. of interesting little nod, but you have to have Vanessa in it so the so she gets her acting parts. I guess. Yeah, I mean, because th- then that's th- there's that too. But I thought it was it was more of an imaginative take. You know what? I can see that too. It's just him him internal internalizing right. that because he's te- he's not dead. 
Because he can't. He's not. He's even not when dead. he exploded, he wasn't yeah. dead. Yeah. He was just disembodied. Right. Right. So it's all in his head. It's like maybe yeah. his his id kind of. Yeah. Area. Exactly. That, that, that's that's exactly what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. So I thought that that that's if if anything that was just a you know a a, a window into his psyche. Right. So I mean, I didn't mind that too much. It was How, fine. But, but you're right. Like that would have been even funnier. If, if it was if, actually if he was dancing with death, can you imagine it was just Kate Blanchett and it's just yeah. hella a funny little cameo? <laughs> right? Are you death? She's like, yeah, kind of. <laughs> you want to go on a date? No, go out of here. And he goes back and he gets back to life. Yeah. Then he has the epiphany: I need to save this kid. Right. I can't do it alone because Cable's too real. Yeah. And I can't take him on my own. And then we get all the T.J. Miller stuff <laughs> yeah. where he's like, yeah, we got to get back on LinkedIn. We got to assemble the squadron. Right. And then we have one of my favorite scenes in the movie is the team gathering. Right. I always love that about movies. Yeah. Like Oceans 11. Yeah. You know, let's get the, the band together, right? So they're doing all the interviews, and it's the most nerdy X. If you're a fan of X Men, you just love this. Because <laughs> they introduce Bedlam, which mm-hmm. is played by uh, Terry, uh, Terry Crews. Yeah. And he has the power to do. He's like, he, he has this weird finger motion. He's like, I just took electrical circuits. <laughs> he said it's so weird. He was like, I just took electrical circuits in your brain. <laughs> like, I make you feel angry, tense. <laughs> I make you feel like you want to cause bedlam. <laughs> so, what is Terry Crews doing, man? <laughs> <laughs> so, it just, oh. it was like so awkward. He was like, "Yeah, you're in." And then we get a street, a street level shatter star. Dude. Yeah, and they even do his weird like origin story. Yeah. He's like, so where are you from? I'm from an alien planet. I don't know why I keep saying it like Terry Crews. Yeah. It's like I'm from an alien planet. Uh, Mojo, Mojo World. I'm like, they mentioned Mojo World, dude. It, it now exists in the X universe. I'm fine with that. I love Mojo stuff with Long Shot and Spiral and all those dudes. Can you imagine those spirals in this movie? It, it won't happen. Wasted opportunity. It, it would. It, well, I mean, at that point, if they, really, if they really did do that, then it would be like character overload. It, character. It, it, it would be. It would be on the level of like Spider Man. I'm and just Spider-Man sad too. that the X Men never got their Infinity War. Hmm. It never went cosmic. Right. You never yeah. got Morlocks. You never got Savage mm-hmm. Land. You never got any of that wacky stuff. Yeah. That's just ripe for for the picking. You know yeah. what I mean? It never went there. It's always stayed too grounded for me. Yeah. Because X-Men is goofy as shit. Like, <laughs> at its core, X-Men is really goofy and weird. <laughs> and you have uh, 50 different Jean Grey clones. Right. And, and Sauron, who's just a giant pterodactyl man. Right. But I digress. <laughs> Shatterstar shows up. And he looks weird. I'm not going to lie. The hair. I didn't like the hair prosthetic. I thought it didn't look natural enough. <laughs> and yet these weird. I have a pet peeve in movies. And I want mm-hmm. you to please bear with me, Darren. It's when people have, are supposed to have white eyes. But mm-hmm. they have the black iris. Yeah. Bugs yeah. me every time. Don't even yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. Just have it completely white. The black iris throws me off every single yep. day. It's cheap. Mm-hmm. Stop doing it, Hollywood. Stop it. And to me, we're introduced to the breakout character of the film. Domino. Domino. Yep. How did you feel about Domino? I like Domino. I have the biggest crush on Domino. But, Zazie Bell, I think. Is yeah. Her name? Uh, oh my god. I like I, I like her as Domino. Um, I think again, same thing with Cable. Like, well, with her, she's a little more fleshed out. She mm-hmm. does actually. You do sort of see. You that. see her do her thing. Yeah. Her power. You still don't. Pe- you still. I mean, it's still you know nothing ar- about her. No, of course. I mean, yeah. it, it's still argued. Even among people, if she's really even a mutant, I but, love that. I love but, that about her character because it's yeah. an intangible. Right, it's a status effect. Right, you know what I mean. It's an AOE. the The official explanation for Domino is that she has a telekinetic. She has a, a an involuntary telekinetic manipul- manipulation of statistics. Yes. What that basically means is that in the back of her mind, she's actually manipulating real world she, she, things she's yeah she, she's she has a psychosomatic manipulation of the world around her yes that's it, such which a they example. call as, as luck as a luck but, field. It, but as you know if you, if you live in the real world luck is merely statistics yes and if, if you can manipulate those statistics you, you're luckier yeah, exactly it's kind of like how people explain black cats natural superpower mm-hmm. right. she has the power she has a very similar power yeah but it's more towards the negative Right. Good things don't happen to her. Bad things happen to you. Right. Whereas it's the same similar situation where it's I don't I don't think it's ever explained that deeply mm-hmm. for Black Cat. 
It's just that she manipulates events around her that causes whoever she's pointing her ire towards right. to get a, a, a run of bad luck. Right. Spider-Man's web shooters won't work. Wolverine accidentally claws, you know, Colossus. All <laughs> types of crazy, that crazy stuff happens. Yeah. Black Cat is a weird one, but... That, uh, and I remember people were so salty about the Domino choice when it first came out. It was such racist you mean the vitriol. Same, the same people that were fucking upset about uh, Michael B. Jordan Michael playing. B. Jordan. Uh, playing like, well, mind you, that movie was terrible. But uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It shouldn't have mattered. Yeah, like, it, it, shouldn't have mattered. it shouldn't matter at all. And people were like raging against Finn holding yeah. a lightsaber. Yeah. Same idiots. Yeah. But I was so the minute I saw it. And that she had vitiligo, which yeah. is a mutation that mm-hmm. calls her as her, her classic, is an inversion. Yeah. Because Domino, in the comics, Domino it's, it's is bl- all white. white, and she has a black. She has a black, like, yeah. mole, like, yeah. constant, permanent thing. Yeah. In, the, in this movie, she's black. Right. But has vitiligo, so it's a white indentation. Yeah. It was so brilliant that I'm yeah. mad that no one else has done it yet. Yeah. Like, Ultimate, like, if, if Ultimate Marvel was still around, mm-hmm. that's what Domino would look like. You know right. what I'm saying? So I was so all for it. And they have the argument, which everyone has. You don't have a superpower. Right. It's like, what's your superpower? I'm lucky. That's not a power. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's, like, it's like, let's agree to disagree and say it's not. <laughs> okay, but it is. And then, like, whatever. You're part of the team. <laughs> we get a weird cameo from so-and-so Skarsgård as, as a zeitgeist. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, guy who played it? Right. Um, Peter, Peter Sarsgaard. Peter Sarsgaard. Um, plays a character I've never heard of, which makes sense. Uh, actually, I think yeah. Zeitgeist actually is he's, in, he's in canon. X-Force. In ca- X-Force but, uh, he's just such a win. Yeah. You know, like, I could have felt... But it's like, it's, it makes sense for what happens mm-hmm. that these are such Z-list characters. Because right. you couldn't... I want to go into it so bad. We'll get there. Yeah. Uh, and I'll talk about it then. And the last one is Peter. Right. And I swear I have I have my own fan ideas about who Peter actually is. <laughs> and I think Peter is actually Colossus. Y- you know. I think it's actually Pietro. Yeah. And he's keeping yeah. an eye on because they're not never they're never in the same team at the same time. Yeah, but he was but Colossus was he he only made a, a Okay, so by, when all that was happening, Colossus was, was still in the X Mansion. Was he? Yeah, because he when be- when he because when they came to after all that shit went down, mm-hmm. and you know after one got killed, mostly yeah, he went he went to Colossus because I mean he got because yeah, Peter got super melted. Yeah, he got I forgot about by, that yeah, part. He so got that melted by Zeitgeist. Yeah, yeah, like, he got so, melted by Zeitgeist. So, so he would if it was really Colossus, he would have just transformed right and saved himself. But right. <laughs> damn, that blows my entire idea. I forgot about that part. Let's go into that. So X Force is, is combined, and there's the Vanisher. Mm-hmm. It's such a stupid, <laughs> it, it's such a cheap but yet effective gag. <laughs> and the, and we find out that there's a wind advisory right. in effect, which everyone ignores everywhere in the world. And they're and for some reason they're going to Halo drop in, and he's given the breakdown of what's going to happen and how they're going to bail out the kid because he's being transported to another location. "Quote unquote Genosha." I'm just gonna keep throwing it out. There. <laughs> but and if for some reason all the biggest badasses are in this convoy, not yeah. the entire uh, prison. Yeah, only the most violent ones. Only the most violent ones. Yeah. And this kid falls within that. Black Tom is there, yeah. and a special little character that we're gonna come across in a second. <laughs> in little, little. I love that. Right. <laughs> He's a big baby. Uh, and they jump out the. They, all right, let's let's deploy, deploy, deploy. Yeah. They all jump out the. Uh, <laughs> it is such a, so brilliant. They jump out the damn um, Halo drop. Who 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 bought that anyway? Like who 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 financed the Halo drop? It wasn't sure. It wasn't Wade. <laughs> Could have been Wade. He did have like a billion dollars under under that uh, under the floorboards. Yeah. <laughs> you know he, he's paying for all these trips around the world. Yeah. <laughs> Wade's a secret billionaire in in the most comedic way fashion. Everyone but Deadpool and Domino die in the most interesting ways. Yeah. So when the advisory happens, the wind kicks up, <laughs> he throws Bedlam face first into into a bus. <laughs> He's done. He's dying. Right. He's finished. Shatterstar 
drifts into a helicopter and gets shredded yeah. into a billion pieces with green blood. It's so good. <laughs> so hyped for that moment. Uh, Zeitgeist wipes out in front of like a family van or something like that. Like, no, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> no, right? no, what, what, no, what happens is he actually, for whatever weird <laughs> screwed up reason, he actually ends up into a wood chipper. Right. He flies <laughs> into a wood chipper. Yeah. And, um, and Peter is trying to save him. And Peter lands perfectly. Yeah. I did it. X Force. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, he, and he goes to save, uh, Zeitgeist. Right. Peter goes to save Zeitgeist while Dimple's watching all of this. Yeah. And he's like, man, we're X Force, dude. We're X Force. Mm-hmm. And Peter and uh, Zeitgeist is like, yeah, man. Wait. And he throws up all over Peter <laughs> and it has this wicked, like, like effect where it, eats through Peter's face and yeah. chest. It's the grossest <laughs> thing I've seen since, like, Evil Dead. It's so graphic. It was great. And I'm great. like, holy shit, it was it's great. amazing. It was great. Best scene of the movie. And Deadpool's like, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, for fuck's sake. He's like, I guess, the- that's De- I guess that's X-Force. <laughs> <laughs> and then the Vanisher flies into some power lines, <laughs> dies, <laughs> unvanishes, and it's fucking Brad Pitt. I, yeah. <laughs> it's so I, That's what I thought it was. It's that's, Brad that's Pitt. What, it's, so, it's so weird. It's so nuts, dude. It was it's like, so it, incredibly weird. He looks so goofy. It looked like, they, it looked like they photoshopped his face and just threw it onto the screen. <laughs> And I was like, who was, because I heard rumors that Brad Pitt was going to play Cable. He was on set, whoop-de-whoop. And it was, he was just the most throwaway character in X-Men history. <laughs> and, of course, Domino lands perfectly. Oh, floats. Yeah. And they still have to go through the, with the mission. Yeah. And Baby Driver levels of direction of how of how Domino's power actually works. Yeah. It's, it's, it's on par with... The Nightcrawler hot like the Nightcrawler like White House scene where Oh yeah. You know, in X two. In X two where, where it's like yeah. this is how this character power works at maximum effort. Right. And the opening of that movie is one of my favorite scenes in yeah. comic book history. Yeah. It's so badass. And then you see Domino landing into cars and mm-hmm. and, and it's like almost like a Rude Goldberg effect yeah, where Yeah, sort of, yeah. Where a guy shoots at her. The bullet jams. Yeah. She takes it away from him, slides it on the floor. Some dude steps on the gun, <laughs> falls back, slides into another car chasing them, and the car swears off. It's the most coolest, like, <laughs> one shot of the year. Yeah. And even with that, even counting Infinity War, mind you. Uh, and we finally get the reveal of who the kid has befriended. Mm-hmm. And it ends up being the juggernaut. Yeah. Like... And for those who are not really familiar and only know like the Juggernaut from X X three mm-hmm. and I'm the Juggernaut bitch goofiness, yeah, no J- Juggernaut in the comics is a major problem. Like mm-hmm. Juggernaut's like toe to toe with the Hulk. Yeah, you know problem that it takes teams to beat Juggernaut. Right, right. Because he has that that gym. Because he's not technically a mutant. No, he has that gym. I forget what it's, it's called. It's called the, uh, the Cryo Crack. Cryo, uh, cryo, uh, cryo, cryo attack or something like that. Cryo attack crystal. Yeah. And just to give you a real quick origin story on what who Juggernaut is. Juggernaut is the biological brother mm-hmm. or half brother of Charles Xavier. Yep. Think um, Charles is more um, like more Manchester mm-hmm. where England where he's mm-hmm. more proper and kind of preppy. Whereas Kane Marco. Kane Marco is more cockney. Yeah. Oi. <laughs> yeah. Get over here, mate. You yeah. know, he's this big uh he's always been jealous of his brother. And they both grew up rich. Right. But Kane was always his own guy and they family loved Charles Moore. So Kane was going through and like I guess doing an archaeological dig or just happened to be there. He was muscle right. on a dig. Found the this crystal that's possessed by one of the ancient evils of the universe, the the cryocrack demon. Mm-hmm. And it granted him immortality. And unstoppable forward momentum. Yeah, exactly. And superhuman strength. Right. Meaning that once he starts going, it takes a magical being like Doctor Strange to actually stop him in his tracks. Right. Or a manipulation of gravity itself right. to stop him. So Juggernaut has fought cats like the Thing, yeah. the Hulk, the Blob, like like universal constants in the Marvel Universe. And it's taken them down. Right. He's fought Venom to stand still. It's like... Like, he's one of my favorite villains because hmm. he's so dumb, but yet he's just so raw yeah. power. And we kind of get a glimpse of that a little bit. They always gimp these characters. They yeah. gimp the Hulk so bad. Anyway, 
<laughs> so Deadpool runs into uh, Juggernaut. And he's of course jucking it up. Aren't you a big C- C- CG monster? And De- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. calls him that. And, and of course, Juggernaut CG because yeah. truthfully, that's the only way you can give that, exactly. that character justice. He has to be a big giant CG. Like if they ever bring the thing back, he has to be CG. Yeah, in my opinion. Because the thing is not tall. No. He's no. like maybe about seven one. Maybe oh, seven foot tall. Wait, maybe six thing? five. Yeah, yeah. The thing is yeah, he's a short guy. He's not yeah. in the in the long run of because mm-hmm. Colossus is taller right. than the thing. He's just a big stocky rock dude. But Juggernaut's like, I'm gonna just rip I'm gonna rip you in half. Yeah. And what does he do? <laughs> He rips off his torso in the most, <laughs> and, it, and Deadpool's reaching for his intros like a Mortal Kombat fatality. <laughs> yeah, he's like, "Where are my legs?" Where are my legs? And Colossus comes and just gathers him up. And uh, oh no, that was, it was Domino. Domino comes yeah, and gathers yeah. him. Thank you. Yeah, gathers him up, and uh, the kid and he's like, "Hey, kid, what do you want to do now? We're a bunch of badasses. Let's, <laughs> just get, let's get let's get crazy, man. I want to burn that school down. F that school. Goes, All right, <laughs> Juggernaut's just cool with it because yeah. he's out now." And so, and it made and someone made a good point. It's like when Deadpool is severely injured, mm-hmm. how does not every part of him create another Deadpool? That's okay. And there's an answer for that. Yeah, it's attached to his brain. Stem. Exactly. If his spinal column, if any part of his brain is is kind of taken away, mm-hmm. that can then regrow an entire body. Right. It's a part of his brain. It's almost like like a chunk of his like his brain. Mm-hmm. So if any part of that is, it's like cell. He's almost right. like Cell, yeah. right? You can pretty much cut him off to his nose, and he'll just slowly grow back. So, actually, I was going to ask: is that is that canon at all? Does does it's never been does, truly? Does Juggernaut actually do that? What to, to Wade in the comics? Because I don't think so. Wade has gotten some pretty gnarly injuries. He because, does it to Wolverine. That's what. No, it was. That's what I was going to ask you. He it, does is it that, to Wolverine. It was because uh, the Hulk actually. The Hulk does it to Wolverine. Yeah, too. the Hulk does it to Wolverine. That's what I thought it was a nod to. Because yeah, the whole I, I, Wolverine. Yeah, half. he in the funniest scene ever uh, in the Super mod, nuts. In, the, in the modern version of in, uh, Wolverine in the Ultimate Hulk. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Wolverine's tracking Hulk down. Blah blah. blah. He confronts Hulk. Confronts Wolverine. Wolverine. Uh, Hulk takes Wolverine, rips him in half, and throws his legs into the infinite. He throws him into the infinite, and it's like, how'd you do that? It's like, well, it's a spine. There's breaks between the bone. It's cartilage. I can rip that in half. So he takes his legs and they just go into like a cartoon Team Rocket die. <laughs> into, into, like your legs are gone. They're over there. And we're, it's so funny. Uh, <laughs> it's so nuts. I love comics I, so I, much. I was laughing like for like an hour just at that whole scene. Oh, like, uh, yeah. You know, I was like, what? what? And it's the cover of the damn book. <laughs> it's the cover of the book. Is Wolverine getting ripped in half by like this weird like – like uh it's weird, like Tibetan Hulk. <laughs> he has like this tribal shit on. <laughs> Ultimus was weird and dumb. <laughs> oh, it's so stupid. Anyway, uh, Wade goes back home and recuperates, and it's one of the most disturbing scenes I've seen in a superhero movie ever. Where, where everybody's—I th- I thought it was great. Actually. I loved it. Don't get me wrong. I it had one of the biggest pops in the theater. You know, yeah. Where Cable finds Wade and it's like, look, we need. I'm willing to team up with you if we handle this kid together because now you guys unleashed the juggernaut. Right. And that was more than I bargained for. And I could have handled you idiots, but that's a whole different problem. <laughs> right. So let's work together to neutralize the juggernaut. And I'll give you 30 seconds to reach this kid. Mm. And if you don't, I'm going to kill him as on the spot. And as he's having this conversation, we find they repeat a joke. <laughs> That they did in Deadpool one, <laughs> where his hand he had a little baby hand. Yeah, it yeah. feels so big in this hand. But <laughs> 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 but this time it's his whole lower torso, and he has this weird like Winnie the Pooh thing going on, where he has baby legs <laughs> with no underwear on, and and <laughs> and TJ Miller's like, so you just going free ball it? You just, you just floating out there? You just going Winnie the Pooh it up? <laughs> You just gonna, you're gonna shirt cock it, though. Yeah. He's like, he's like, don't judge me, man. I'm healing. I mean, don't judge me. Is, what the hell is he supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I don't have pants that fit this. <laughs> and everybody's watching, right? And while and while Cable's pleading his pleading in his case, 
he does an in, he does a basic instinct where he opens his legs and crosses them, <laughs> and you see everything for a split second. And everyone just lost it. The whole theater went nuts. And I was just like, no, they didn't. They just didn't do that. It was the most disturbed. It was so great. Everybody, the whole theater just blew up. Kids, oh, everybody's laughing. And, <sighs> and, 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 and Cable's like, will you join me? He's like trying so hard to ignore what's happening. And Deadpool gets up. He's like, oh, no, he's doing it. Look at him. He's doing it. He's shirt he's, he's sure cocking it, Doug. He's doing it. And he just walks up and shakes his hand. <sighs> You see, like his little baby legs and all his all his uh, business. It's Ooh. just made the movie. That scene made the movie. It's so stupid. It's such a funny movie. <laughs> it's so dumb. I love it. I love this movie. Oh, uh, so where where do we go from here? So we get the understanding of that he's he explains everything to them because mm-hmm. at first they're just like he's just Cable, he's right. just some badass. But no, I came from the future. This is why I want to kill this kid. He killed me. He killed my wife and daughter because he's evil re- reasons, and I only have one more time f- time flip is what they call it in the comics. Right. Okay. Well, I'm thinking about Cable. Why, for the love of I don't know what's gonna, everything, what ask. did he not have a hyper viper beam? Uh, um, Why didn't his gun that could do anything? I, Shoot a hyper so, viper beam. So again, like they sort of they they sort of allude to it. Why with, with the with oh. the levels on on the actual gun? What should have just said hyper but viper? Again, like at this point, I'm so spoiled okay, by Infinity War. I, I mean, okay, yeah. Again, like I don't have an official explanation for that, but I can have I have a rational rationalization for it. Okay, and the oh, reason yeah. why is because I, I'm sure they figured at this point that if he if he were to just use that. It was, then, it's the problem. It's the problem solver. Right. Exactly. And the plot just goes straight to shit. And then also, uh, that's There's probably more cable they're assuming. Right. So why not save it? Right. Right. Because he didn't use any of his cooler stuff. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't do time flip. He yeah. Didn't, uh, he used grenades and kind of cool stuff. And, yeah. But I just wanted one hyper viper to take out Juggernaut as the final hit. That would have been awesome. Right. Again, that would have changed the whole entire plot. Yes, and it would have made the movie worse. I, yeah. I know. I'm just yeah. spoiled. Yeah. For those who don't know, Hyper Viper Beam is a move that Cable does in one of his only video game, playable video game appearances, Marvel vs. Capcom 2, the second best fighting game of all time. <laughs> Fight me. The first one is Capcom vs. SNK 2, but I'm not going to go into that. Yeah, I'm a, let's, I'm a, let's, I'm, let's not do that. Fuck Capcom. Uh, anyway, <laughs> they devise a plan, and they're like, okay, we need to head out. Which makes me think. How long did it take Deadpool to regenerate his legs? Uh, I think they said within a day or a couple, couple of days, days right? A couple of days, yeah. So why did the kid and Juggernaut wait to go to the school? You I don't think know. they just huffed it. They probably. I mean, uh, you think that kid that you know? Well, I mean, he, if he had, if he had used his unstoppable momentum, he went went, went right past it. <laughs> right, because so, he can't like, stop. So they had to just huff it, right? Yeah. Because Juggernaut's not fitting in a bus. Right. That's like 12 feet tall. Yeah. That's also – locations are kind of – Funky left. in they're, this they're, movie. They're, they're left kind of vague. Because like – You still don't really know where you are in, in the movie location-wise. Because it bounces around. It's like how yeah. far is the icebox right. from Essex School from the Xavier Institute? Right. Because it, it all seems like it's down the street. It has a very Batman yeah. versus Superman vibe. It's like, did you know that Metropolis is only half a mile away from dark, from Gotham City? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not going to get upset about that right now. Um, so two day, I'm guessing a day or two to, to regrow yeah, a whole yeah, course. I, show, I right? remember he said like it, it takes like a couple of days. It takes that. a couple of days yeah. for something that drastic to yeah. rehill, right? So they go, in, it, they intercept Juggernaut in the child um, before they kill. I'm just going to say Mr. Sinister because I don't know the guy's name. Yeah, that I I didn't look at the IMDb Chris, but I just assumed that that's who it was. You, it would make sense, right? Yeah. It's, it's too much of a red herring yeah. for him not to be somebody. And right. the, in spoilers, the guy survives because yeah. he has to. If the kid kills him, then the whole movie's mo- moot, right? Yeah. So they have the big fight scene where it's Deadpool trying, it's Deadpool and Cable trying to yeah. reach to the kid who's getting a handle on his mutant powers, which makes sense because mm-hmm. that's how mutant powers work. The more you use them the more you're going to get a handle for him, right. which is why I always hate why they, they they gimped Rogue and never let her really learn how to use her powers correctly until like 2005 where yeah. she didn't need her gloves anymore. 
Shut up, Professor Xavier. I hate talking about X Men. I always veer <laughs> off onto stupid plot lines that nobody cares about. Yeah. Anywho, in Nikasan and Teenage Warhead, uh, her girlfriend and Colossus are left to fight the Juggernaut. Right. And they pretty they take care of them pretty yeah. well. I mean, they hold their own. They hold their own, and like canonically, Colossus can't really hang with Juggernaut. Right. They always they like remember the cartoon. So okay, okay. That's true, but one of the things... Okay, that's the one problem I do have with this movie. Yeah. Colossus, they make him seem a, a lot weaker than what he actually is. He, he can't hang t- toe-to-toe like on his own with Juggernaut, yeah. but he was getting worked like really he's bad. Getting, like wor- worse than, than than he's ever been in any other setting. No, Senate. Homegirl worked him harder in the first <laughs> Deadpool than he got worked by... Well, Juggernaut was throwing him around like a right. rag doll. Right. And like... In the pantheon of mm-hmm. Marvel strongies, mm-hmm. he's probably – he's top 10. Mm-hmm. You, you know what I'm saying? He's not top five. Right. Because you have cats like Thor and Silver Surfer floating around. Of course, yeah. But in the realm of X-Men, he's mm-hmm. the he's the strong man. Right. But the problem with Juggernaut is he doesn't play by mutant rules. Exactly, right. And makes him a completely different avenue of villain. Yeah. He's top – he's low, upper tier. So like you said, that – and the thing is is that movies nerf – the strong men mm-hmm. all the time. Hulk has been nerfed so bad, <laughs> especially if you saw Infinity War, yeah. which we were going to talk about funny enough. And I kind of wanted your opinion on that as a sidebar. The oh, yeah. I mean, whatever. Hulk, Hulk, man. Like, the guy can lift mountains and shit, but they nerfed him so hard in these MCU movies. They, well, whatever. Anyway, <laughs> but Colossus, he should have not, he, he, he not won head toe-to-toe with mm-hmm. Juggernaut. I get it. But like you said, he was getting worked, like, yeah. like not even a problem, like <laughs> breaking limbs and punching out metal teeth. Yeah. And like, how does that work? Does he just go human, let the teeth well, that, grow back and then metal back up? I don't know. I, that, I saw that and I was like, uh. Thinking about, ex- be, thinking about mutant powers, it's funny. I was just doing a <laughs> podcast and I was saying, I was telling my, co- the co-host went, um, uh, my co-host winner, mm-hmm. I was like, the more I think about Iceman, like what he really can do. Is like why isn't he some kind of god of of like a planet somewhere? You can't think <laughs> like about bi- Iceman like power because Iceman he could turn into vapor <laughs> and reconstitute <laughs> physical limbs yeah. and like intestines and shit. Like he's a conscious, he's a consciousness that just floats and is it's governed by the by the moisture and air. Right. So if it's moist. If there's water anywhere yeah. on any level, Iceman will live and survive. He can make clones of himself. Right. Yes, he can change the. He can cause an ice age if he wanted. I hate Iceman. I love him so much, <laughs> but it's like it makes your head hurt thinking about that character too much. Right. Anywho, see, this is why I don't like talking about X Men. Always <laughs> drift off. But uh, we're reaching the climax of the film, and uh, they take care and. Nekasani Teen's Warhead is kind of the problem solver mm-hmm. in these movies because she's kind of OP mm-hmm. in these movies because she's just, I explode and whatever's in front of me is getting wiped out pretty much. Yeah. So they beat the shit out of Juggernaut and they in, they, they incapacitate him. Mm-hmm. He doesn't he doesn't look like he has the forward momentum ability mm-hmm. and he's from just a big brute. They don't utilize it. Mm-hmm. So they take him down between... Uh, uh, Yuriko, I think that was her name. Uh, Yukio. Yukio. Yeah. Hi, Yukio. <laughs> uh, uh, Negasonic and Colossus, they get the job done. Mm-hmm. It should be damn near impossible. But anyway, <laughs> we, we get to the scene where uh, Wade is in a final standoff between Fire Fist and Cable. And Wade is like, I, I got it. I'm going to learn this kid's trust. I'm going to earn his trust. So he puts on. A mutant inhibitor. I yeah, where he got that shit from? Yeah, I, I still. I mean, I, I get I that. I get. I get. Oh no, no, no. I, okay, no. I, I know where they got it from. I know where they got it from. When those, when some of the orderlies were coming, a few they were the, trying to use yeah, them, right? Yeah, and then they were all killed. They were all killed and easily, but Domino was in in the scene too. But she was also doing some other random. Right. Thing. She was trying to, to. She was trying to like save the children yeah, or something. Yeah. And and Wade puts on the 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 power inhibitor. Yeah. And says, "If you want to kill me, you can kill me right now. As if this keeps you from from fulfilling your evil destiny." Right. And he decides to do it anyway. And Deadpool, I mean, um, and Cable just shoots him with one of his super pew pew guns. <laughs> and Wade, of course, jumps in front of the bullet mm-hmm. and has the longest death <laughs> rattle. 
<laughs> to the point where I thought he was just messing with them. Yeah. But no, he was dying. Yeah. It, because, but it, how long did that last? Too that long, That lasted right? like about like 10 minutes almost. It was a 10 minute was, death scene. I was, like, I was scene. like, dude, like fucking die. Out of like, it, like, it was a little longer than it needed to be. Yeah. And of course he goes. It got silly. He got all. super silly. And we find out that Cable uses his final time flip right. to go and save Deadpool's life. He mm-hmm. used, there was a, a plot device, and I'm using that a lot because they use it. They use yeah. it a lot. That's a yeah. bad plot device. Yeah. A Chuck E. Cheese coin or something <laughs> that Vanessa gave him. Right. Deadpool took off of him. I mean, I'm sorry. Cable, Cable took off took, of him. took it, yeah. And he put it back to exactly where the bullet was go, which right. is nuts. How did he see that? I guess with his sign, his giant's uh, Omega level eye. <laughs> And save Deadpool's life. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, what are you going to do now? I was like, I could stay in this time for a little while. My family's fine. The bear yeah. got better. It got, I got better. Yeah. I'm not dead. <laughs> he heard his daughter from the future. I'm not dead. I feel happy. <laughs> That's like for three people. Uh, <laughs> so he's like, oh, we can stick around. I'll be part of uh, X Force for a while. Yeah. So yeah. X Force now consists of uh, Dopinder, uh, Negasonic. I guess Colossus, yeah. Uh, Cable, Deadpool, Domino, yeah. And this is X Force as it sits now, right? Exactly. And it's Fox's version of X Force. It's Fox's version of X Force, which I don't they, mind because they couldn't get any of the other heavy hitters like Archangel, right? And then that he he keeps asking Psylocke. about him. He actually keeps asking about him. Yeah, he keeps like Deadpool is constantly asking, "Hey, where's the 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 dude with the metal wings? Where's the dude with the metal wings? Like, <laughs> can he be around here somewhere? Warpath, <laughs> yeah, you know Warpath, what I'm saying? yeah. Uh, all the Blades people, yeah. And for those who X Force went through different changes mm-hmm. in the comics, where X Force was just another offshoot of the X Men, kind of like X Factor, yeah. But then it had this cool retcon, like during the 2000s, where the X Force. Became the wet work team, mm. where Cyclops was like, "We're X Men. We have to be on the on. We have to be in front of the camera. Mm-hmm. We're the good guys. We save the day. But if we need something dirt dirty to happen, right. Wolverine, I need you to take the X Force, which is all the people who don't mind getting their their fingers dirty, right? Like a Warren Warren Worthington, like a uh, Psylocke mm-hmm. or a uh, Deadpool for that matter. Basically, assassins. Cable. They're, they're the assassins they're, they're of assassins, the X Men. Yeah. They're the secret." Assassin crew that has to do the nasty stuff that can't be on the screen. Right, they're the it, they're the covert team, and if they and if if by the luck of the of the mouse, this goes forward, I would like that. I would like like a weird rated R Mission Impossible kind of X Force movie where they there's blood and and explosions and cameos and you can see them really dig in and go on covert missions and stuff like that. I think that would be dope. Yeah, I I would love to see that. Cool. So that's where the movie ends. This is the ending. Mm-hmm. He Deadpool's found his family, quote unquote, and he's happy. He's he's kind of reserved in the death of his of his girl, mm-hmm. knowing that one day they'll be reunited. And it's all very wholesome and all very Deadpool because like the first one was a morality tale mm-hmm. about finding love and finding someone who accepts you as you are. Mm-hmm. All these movies have this weird undercut of family film. On top of blood, sex, and violence. <laughs> and then we have the Stingers. Yeah. And there's... Is there only one that's a really long one or are there there's two? There's two, actually. Yes. That, uh, no, there's three. So technically... so. But they're bunched together. Yeah. And it's and it's actually the best thing. Best, one of the best... I, I would say it's the best part of the movie. It's the best part of the movie. Because it's, it's Fox thumbing them their their nose at their own at themselves yeah, at, the, at themselves and saying even though it doesn't matter it because doesn't because matter. because like i mean it's just it's just for fun basically okay and to realize that they they fucked up <laughs> like with, with how do you want to do this i'll do the first one okay you do the second one yeah. i'll do the third one okay uh so the first stinger <laughs> is uh negasonic and her girlfriend t- um tinkering with yeah. the Time machine. Yeah. Somehow these two idiots figured out how to get it working again. <laughs> a super high tech ultra machine that that riv- that rivals anything in the world. Mm-hmm. And Deadpool's like, I'm going to use this for a while. Mm-hmm. And like what? And and Yoni goes like, oh, it'll be fine. And like Negasan is like, what have we done? <laughs> right. No, it's the other way around. Yukio is the one who said she was like, hmm, maybe that wasn't such a good idea to give it to him. And Negasan was like, yeah, yeah it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Cable's going to kill him, but who cares? <laughs> 
So what is the, and it's a thing because that's a th- that's a power that Deadpool has. Right. He can teleport. Yeah. So he's like, and it's a form of time travel. Right. Exactly. So I'm happy they get, they folded that. Yeah. Finally into his power set. Right. Because it's not a mutant power. It's mm-hmm. a technical doodad that exactly. he gets from Cable. Right. It's canon. Right. Which makes it doubly cool. Yeah. So what's the first thing Cable uh, Deadpool does? Is he goes back in time. He goes back in time to 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 stop. To use, to, death. Yeah, yeah. He uses the the cream cheese spreader and he kills the guy yeah, because yeah. he knows the shot's coming. Right. So the whole movie's moot at yeah. that point. But yeah. that's alive. <laughs> yeah. So that's already <laughs> stupid, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which I find hilarious. Yeah. If it wasn't so. What the fuck was this about? <laughs> I love it. Okay, what was, what happened next after that? So then after that, um, then he goes back. I, he goes. He goes back. And, and for whatever reason, so it, it's it's twofold. So they they, they cross um, universes. No, 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 not yet. He goes back again, and he saves Peter. Oh, that's right. Yeah, he saves. Okay, that's right. He saves Peter, but then um, but no one else. But, well, okay, that's debated though. They they're because, saying because they were saying that it he, they, he saved him. Yeah, but everything else also happened off screen, so you don't know what else he did. Right. So you think. Well, he th- you think he went back and saved all the other? It possibly. possibly. I mean, if, if I mean, they want it to be that way, it can be that. Way. Right. I mean, right? because it's the kind of left open ended. And you know, you want to, you want that shatter star money, yeah. <laughs> so they left that open. So yeah. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I don't no, want to no, skip no. that. Part. No, 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 that that's I actually forgot about that. But so yeah, then on the third stinger, which is the the <laughs> best part to me, honestly. Yeah. Um, Deadpool goes back to X Men Origins Wolverine. <laughs> and he and I I love it, but it's also stupid as hell for many reasons. It's so fucking stupid it's because it causes okay, so many problems. With the yeah, it, 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 yeah, <laughs> it yeah. That, that, that's so the that's problems. the whole point of of, tr- of that was his whole point trying to fix the timeline. He even says that yeah, I'm fixing the timeline. Yeah, I'm fixing the timeline. But Sorry, Logan, don't, but don't just, scratch me. But okay, so basically, he goes back to X Men Wolverine, uh, X Men Origins Wolverine, where Wolverine is at the for, he's he's. It's he's he's going he's going to to face off with the with, that Deadpool. With Deadpool. Yeah. With the Deadpool yeah. Weapon 11. Right, Weapon 11, exactly. And <laughs> it's it's a, it's, it's the so official nuts. it's the official scene. Yep. But then dead and then, so you see Deadpool with his with his mouth, you know, sewn up sewn and, open with the it, stupid katana yeah, hands. And you know the one that everyone hated, right? So yeah. Deadpool jumps in and he shoots his himself who's not really himself cuz a different movie altogether. Yeah. And he's like, "Hey, Wolverine, don't don't mind scratch me. me, man. Don't mind me. <laughs> I'm just cleaning, don't I'm just, me. I'm just cleaning up the timeline. He's he just, shoots some more he's just fucking shots, into, but but into weapon eleven. Yeah, and, and like and like he's like, okay, bye. But he, then, but then, what's what's really dumb for multiple reasons is for one, Deadpool can't die like that, and mm-hmm. even and and actually, the thing is, the reason why they're also stupid as hell is because in that movie, after in the very very last uh, in credits for w- Wolverine, he comes back. Yeah, but then but then with that stupid movie, <laughs> there was three different different ones that right. aired in different theaters. Right. So my canon thinking about it because I have to think about this was he used adamantium bullets. <laughs> That's the only thing that could have really put that Deadpool down, incapacitated him. To the point where he was just meat, right? <laughs> That's um, only explanation, right? Because he I had an alien factor just like Wolverine. It was not as good as this well, Deadpool. Remember Wolverine got sh- – this is why I hate that movie. Fucking Wolverine Deadpool. was shot in the head with an adamantium bullet and he just lost his me- – that's how they explain that he lost his memory. Yes. But, this, <laughs> so, like, but he got shot once. Deadpool was pumped – he pumped a clip into this thing's head okay. with, with quote-unquote adamantium bullets. That we don't know. We don't know. Bullet, but but anyway, anyway, none, none it, of that it's, matters. It's super stupid. None, none of that matters, matters because yeah. that was erased by all of that shit was erased by Days of Days Future Past. Cast. Anyway, so, so what happened in that scene? Did he cross dimensions? He just yeah, he crossed dimensions just to do it. He went to Earth ninety five. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just to be an asshole. <laughs> and the hugest pop because because the way that opens is you just see Hugh Jackman. Yeah, and we're like, wait, what? <laughs> And you're like, this is just the scene from X Men yeah, Origins. Exactly, it's not him dressed like Wolverine. I'm like, they're so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's oh God, yeah, it's it's uh, it's just totally meta. It's, it's so it's, it's meta in the sense that Ryan Reynolds also knows how shitty his own character was. Speaking of which, yeah. 
It's the most meta thing I've seen in a movie since like what? Like Pope? No, what? Like you can't get more meta than this. Yeah. So you show up to a house mm-hmm. and it's a nice house and it's well lit. And it's Ryan Reynolds, yeah. <laughs> the man. Yeah. Reading the script for Green, Green Lantern. Lantern. Yes. And he's reading it. He's like, this is gonna be good. He's smiling at himself. <laughs> I'm I'm sure of this. And you see a a bullet just pass through his brain <laughs> and splatter on the on the Green Lantern script. And what does Deadpool say? He says, dodge the bullet there, or something like that. He's like, you're welcome, Canada. You're welcome. <laughs> you're welcome, Canada. <laughs> <laughs> I died. I was, I was, I was, I was arms celebrating. crossed. I was like, just in my seat, done. Like, this is nuts, dude. Oh, Green oh. Lantern never happened. What's funny about that is, is that was supposed to be the first movie for the DCEU. Yeah. And it got retconned out. Yeah. So, he, now it's official. It's told super official. He retconned that he retconned Green Lantern for Warner Brothers in the timeline. Whew, that's that's I was isn't that I, nuts? I was I was, I was I was hooping and hollering at that. that I was, was screaming. That I was, was like, hilarious. This is the best. <laughs> I've never seen anything like that in my entire life. This is the best. You can't get more fifth wall than that. Yeah, in a movie that cost money. Right, it cost money to film that. <laughs> and Ryan, I knew it was Ryan's idea. Yeah, Ryan's like, we're gonna shoot myself in the face, and it's gonna be on the the Green Lantern script. And did you hear um, that DC kind of poked at him a little bit with uh, on Twitter? Like uh, DC, uh, no, I didn't. Warner I didn't. Brothers was like, so Ryan, uh, we're gonna need that Green Lantern ring back. You know the one we gave you for filming. <laughs> And he's like, man, that, and Ryan and Ryan Reynolds reply back, like, you don't want that back. That thing's been places that you don't really <laughs> want to. Oh god, you really don't want to uh, put on your hands anymore. <laughs> and they just yucked it up. It was like a big yuck up, and everybody, of course, took it overly serious. But it was just Warner Brothers poking fun at him for him giving a sharp jab to them. Right. But they should be happy. They as should hell. be happy <laughs> like, that that movie is still getting happy. any kind of publicity. Yeah, because people. Because people, I'm telling you, probably DVD sales and probably rentals of Green Lantern probably went up because of Deadpool 2. So thank you, Warner Brothers. And I've actually never even seen that movie, so. You're a good man. Mm-hmm. I saw it and why? Do, what the fuck is the problem with clouds? Why does every big monster have to be a cloud? <laughs> Hack directors is, is this omnipotent. And I can hear him in the marketing room. <laughs> think about it. Synergy. It's a giant cloud. It, it's ethereal. <laughs> It's so big <laughs> that it doesn't have form. Like Dormammu is a giant cloud. Yeah. Synergy. You see, Dormammu is the he is the universe, right? So we don't have to hire an actor. Shut up. <laughs> Stop making cloud monsters. You still, you still got to hire an actor anyway. Right? Because no, you have to voice, voice the yeah. damn thing. <laughs> so just let the dude be the dude. I want a big green stupid Galactus. I want a big dude that's the size of oh. five planets. Floating out in space like ma- like the maid from Spaceballs. I want oh, that. Man. I want Dormammu to be a guy with a flaming skull head that's not <laughs> Ghost Rider. Right. Give the comic fans what they want. We don't. I'm not going to go on a tirade. That's Deadpool two. Uh, what are your what are your th- passing? What are your final thoughts on this film? Oh man, where does it leave you? It's uh, well, I mean, I knew it wasn't going to go out. In a ba- with a bang, mm-hmm. like uh, because then you know th- this movies make them too much damn money. Yeah, so like they're not they're not gonna you know and plus you know it has to have a future. Right? Yeah, and so like I think f- going forward it probably so these these are my theories actually. So it, it, there probably will be a Deadpool three, but it would, it'd be it would it would be what more capacity. Yes, yeah, I'm saying it would it would but now you have to. You have to expand upon X Force. No. So if there's not a Deadpool three, which at least will be an X Force. Yeah, yeah. I think we've had enough of we've had of, enough of Deadpool of this Wade's yeah. path, right? Right. And now that we're having this conversation, it makes me think about. Let's say everything goes great mm-hmm. and Disney acquires Fox mm-hmm. uh, in a, in an ample time. How do you handle X Men? How do you handle Fantastic Four? Right. That's and a that's a whole other bear. That's a whole other bear. They would to bite. They, they need to see this. That and that's the problem. They that they have to take their t- sweet time with that. They have like to take so sweet, much time yeah. with it. Like people are hoping for X Men cameos in four. We're not going to see any of no. that shit in Avengers no. four. Um, if they're smart, yeah, they'll give the slightest 
hint of a whiff at the four. Right. We're not seeing X Men anytime soon. Exactly. But I kind of hope because Disney is the type where if you're making money for us, we're not going to. F- Pardon my French. Yeah, we're right. not going to fuck with you. Well, yeah. I mean, exactly. And so, so that, that's what I'm saying. Like, make X Men films through Miramax. Mm-hmm. Don't make it under the DC, the MCU. Right. Make it under Miramax. Let it be. It still let it be its own. I its own contained thing. Right. But have your team ups when you want to. Have your cameos, but keep X Men always performed comically by themselves better anyway. Right. Right. Like Beast is an Avenger, mm-hmm. and you know there's and and like May Parker is an X Men because mm-hmm. she was born a mutant technically. Right. So they they marry in different ways, but it's never been ham fisted. So keep Deadpool rated R, which is which Disney's going to have a huge problem dealing with that because Kevin Feige's even said that's something we'll just kind of figure out because they don't do R, right? Because it's not marketable, right? So it's bittersweet this movie because I don't I think this is the last we're going to see of it in this pure uncut, you know, form, right? You know what I'm saying? Like I don't think Disney's going to homogenize it and make it. They make it cookie cutter. Mm-hmm. I hope not, mm-hmm. because they're very good at masking that. Yeah, even though it's all a formula, like from Black Panther mm-hmm. to Doctor Strange, mm-hmm. they feel very different, but it's the same shit. Mm-hmm. It's the same hero beats. It just makes me w- worrisome about something I want so bad. Right, but what am I getting? You know, in a movie like this, it's it's a gem because you can still have full frontal. Mm-hmm. You can still have crazy sexual induendo Mm -hmm. and yet be a blockbuster Mm -hmm. how do you fight that money and i hope disney or comcast wherever well how it work and for and just a piece psa before we close out this episode this is how this works to calm people down and this is what's happening disney is going was going to buy fox Mm -hmm. comcast put in a bid to outbid disney to buy fox Mm -hmm. people are thinking well then the x-men and the fantastic four are going to go to comcast because if they buy Fox and they own it, not no. necessarily. No, how that works is yeah. that the comp. Because what what happens to Fox is that it, it dissolves; it no mm-hmm. longer exists, and it becomes under it becomes Comcast. Mm-hmm. So any deals that have the name twenty twenty first century Fox under that umbrella dissipates with that company. So what happens is is that if Comcast buys Fox, the rights will eventually dissolve back to Marvel. Right, eventually. No matter what happens, they're going back to Marvel. Exactly. The only problem is, is that the time frame in which we're going to get these characters will be drastically slow lowered. Will be drastically drastically slower than if Fox, if if Disney, if the mouse was just to buy Fox right, right out. So we are going to get these characters eventually, but it may not be for another five years. It may not be, God forbid, for another ten years, depending on how all this shakes. That you'll see X Men, that you'll see Wolverine finally fight the Hulk. Right. You know what right. we want, right? Are the Fantastic Four, you know, you know, ha- or have Doctor Doom fight the MCU? Right. You know what I'm saying? So, just to put everybody at ease, they're coming home. It's just, are they taking the bus? Or are they taking a flight? And think about it that way. And just to uh, wrap this all up, you know, yes. none, none of none of this shit would be happening if Marvel never started selling off their. Stuff. And that's a that's a. I would love to do a podcast introspective about the 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 rise, the fall, and the rise of Marvel Comics. I mean, because Marvel in the '90s is fascinating stuff, dude. The selling off of the characters, the piecemeal, the bankruptcy. I mean, they selling off X Men, fine, but they fucking sold Spider Man off. They sold I, everyone off. I was dude. just like anyone that was making money back then in the '90s who were big. The X Men, the, Fan, the Fantastic Four weren't so big, but they sold them off. Blade, they sold right. up Namor, in everyone but Captain America and Iron Man because they were right. making money. But guess what? Marvel is never getting Spider Man back. Never. They're, they're never getting never. them back. And that, ne- I, never every, fully. Every day, never fully. I'm sure they're kicking themselves Sony. in their ass. Here's the thing. <laughs> so the only I hate the, I don't want to drag this on any longer, but I have to say, <laughs> put this out there. Sony are a bunch of asshats outside of their gaming division. Yeah, everyone knows this. Yep. Earlier this year, there was whispers of Sony selling their their film division because it's so bad. But someone's going to swoop that up. Disney Mm -hmm. can't own Sony and Fox at the same time. Then that becomes that truly becomes a monopoly. monopoly. Yeah, and that's why 
these things take so long because the government has to uh, has to say, you know, this isn't legally fair mm-hmm. for you to own this much of the market. So, like you said, my grandkids may see a fully owned Spider Man, but we're not going to see it anytime. Yeah. <laughs> and just really quick, I love the movie. Uh, I think it's bittersweet because of the circumstances around it. As you heard, I have my issues with it, and I but those are nitpicks, honestly. Why isn't it called Genosha Bastards? <laughs> but overall, if I had to rank this movie on a zero to five scale, in my heart of hearts, I would give it maybe a four. I, don't I would give Deadpool a four point five. Mm-hmm. I would give this a four. Okay. What would you give this movie on a scale from zero to five? I'd give it a of I I would give it higher than that, honestly. Only okay. because I can overlook some I can overlook some Something even, even though they're stupid, ex- even though they're dumb as hell, I can overlook them because of the quality of the movie. The so, kid really bothered me. Yeah. Certain cheap ways out of certain characters really bothered me. Yeah. That's the only thing that's knocking it down the whole point. Otherwise, the comedy and the and the source the things they got right were super right. Yeah. Colossus was but then weirdly right. the stuff they got wrong was, was really wrong. wrong yeah so that's where it bothers me <laughs> i give it a 4.7 or that's, like, yeah it, it, and only again you know if if i were to really take it a little more seriously which i can't with this movie anyway can't. Nah. then I, w- I would actually give it lower than what you <laughs> that you gave yeah it, but yeah but yeah going into it with the expectations that i had yeah i give it a 4.0 you can't give me anything higher because that kid just irked me so damn much <laughs> and like you said the stinkers really stunk, yeah. but the hitters really hit. Yeah. Now, as I always ask you, I'm sorry to always ask you, <laughs> Darren, um, if you were to make a Deadpool themed beer, what flavors and how what what would it be his composition? It'd be a chimichanga beer. Gross as shit. <laughs> you know what? It makes perfect sense. <laughs> it'll be a, it'll just be a Corona with a with a blender of chimichanga. You just put that shit in a blender <laughs> and a full cigar. <laughs> and just drink that shit and have fun. Yeah. Deadpool. That, that, that one's easy. That's the canon answer. And no one will buy it. No one will buy it but us because I just want it on my shelf somewhere. Yeah. It'd be a collectible. It'll be a collectible. Ryan would drink it. Yeah. Ryan would drink the shit out of it. Um, where can we find you, Darren? You can find me on Facebook at Beer Business Bureau. You can find me on Twitter at Beer B Bureau. And you can find me on Instagram, Beer Business Bureau. Find this man. He will feed you, like, horchata-flavored beers. Maybe not that, but yes. Maybe not that, but (laughs) yes. And if you like the show, you like our reviews, and you want to give us any reviews, suggestions, review suggestions, uh, past, present, future, doesn't matter. We review everything. We review nothing but trouble, for Lord's sake. Uh, You can definitely send that to mastersofthenerdiversecast at gmail.com. That is masters of the nerdiverse cast at gmail.com. And as always, I would like to ask you to check out our website, uh, masters of the nerdiverse cast.com. There you can actually listen to old episodes, such as the very first ones, where I'm literally losing my mind, just talking to myself into the darkness. <laughs> and you get to hear that madness for the first like 10, 15 episodes. It's beautiful. Uh, you can uh, also visit our Patreon. If you want to toss us some ducats, help with the production of the show so my, I can get better microphones and sound more professional and, and, and eventually start MLTN plays, which is something I've been talking about all year. Where we stream on Twitch. You can ball with me and we can play some Monster Hunter. Yeah. Or play some Marvel's Capcom 3 and I'll pick Deadpool. <laughs> <laughs> this is a hyper combo. Anyway, uh, you can always find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker. SoundCloud, YouTube, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and one day in a shining, beautiful future, Spotify. Um, I'm, of course, your host, Mike G. And I will always ask you to look towards the skies. Just be mindful of the wind visory, though. Why Mind those wind visories while you're looking towards the skies because oh, yeah. you may be blown by the skis. You may end up in a wood chipper. Oh, man. X-Force. <laughs> X-Force. Shout, do that, do it, never do it